everyone, Kyle Erickson here. If you've bought an Apple device or really any smartphone or electronics in the last few years, you might notice that more and more products are shipping without chargers. A lot of manufacturers are doing this as part of environmental initiatives. So a lot of the time things are now left up to the consumer to buy their own chargers, which has presented a bit of a problem. These manufacturers are likely going to want you to pony up and buy their chargers specific for their products. But we all know that in the real world, that isn't super likely in a lot of cases. I'd say that most people are gonna use what they already have kicking around, buy something that's cheap or whatever is close to home, or use public chargers. Basically the path of least resistance, which is to be expected. But I wanna go over why that's generally a bad idea and why a charger like this, the Ugreen Nexode 140 watt charger, solves a lot of problems that people may not even have known existed. To really understand why charging can be risky, we first have to understand how modern charging works on all of our devices. It used to be that you'd just have your little USB charger, plug it in, and there wasn't really a whole lot you needed to worry about because most chargers were relatively the same. If you take a look at an old charger, you'll see something like this. Five volts at 1500 milliamps or 1.5 amps. We get the wattage by multiplying voltage by the amps. In this case, that would be a 7.5 watt charger, which is pretty common five or so years ago. Fast forward to present day, and you see a lot of phones that have 20, 65, or 80 watt charging, or even higher in some cases. And if you take a look at the charger for that particular device, you'll often see something like this. 20.3 volts at 3.3 amps, 15 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 3 amps, or 5.2 volts at 3 amps. Pretty confusing, right? Uh, essentially what all this means is you have a bunch of power delivery options or protocols here and between these chargers and your devices it's supposed to be smart enough to know the optimal or most compatible charging specs, a handshake with your device and use the best option available. It's very similar to how an HDMI cable works with your TV to determine the best resolution and display a picture from another device. This is the reason why I can plug my iPhone into this MacBook charger and charge it, but like anything else, this doesn't always go according to plan. Uh, different devices use different power delivery specs depending on the brand, with different quality control, and what we end up with is kind of a mess when it comes to charging options. A cheap or incompatible charger can end up charging at a slower speed, or in some cases, even damage your device. That can happen through an incorrect handshake between the charger and the device, or it can have a fluctuation in voltage that can be pretty detrimental. I've wrecked a couple of phones myself through cheap chargers where they'd either damage the battery or the actual USB PCB board on the phone, and it's not something that I would fool around with. Not only that, but I'd be really reluctant to plug my phone into random USB ports in public places like airports, because there's always a risk of data transfer that goes along with using those. Our device's charging ports are also used for data transmission and there are going to be people out there who are trying to exploit that, so just something to be aware of. So where do we go from here? Well, you could definitely go out and buy your manufacturer branded chargers, or you can buy a really nice high quality charger like the one that I have here, the Ugreen Nexode 140 watt charger. If you look at Apple specifically, they've got six or seven chargers available, but really only one or two I can use with all my devices from my laptop all the way down to my iPhone or my Apple Watch, and in most cases, it's only going to charge one device at a time. I don't know about everyone else, but I find it such a pain to have to plug in multiple chargers into an outlet, and that's why I love using this Nexo charger so much. First of all, I know this might sound weird with this being a wall charger, but the build quality of this charger feels outstanding. It's got a nice weight to it, and just the overall construction feels really solid. I'm able to charge three devices all at the same time with this, and that could be anything from a 16-inch MacBook Pro all the way down to my iPad, iPhone, or Apple Watch, and all with high wattage, meaning that all my devices are gonna have great power delivery available and charge up really quickly. This Nexo charger uses the latest PD 3.1 protocol, which means this has a ton of power available packed in a really small size, which is why this can be just about as small as this 67 watt Apple charger that I have here, but have a lot more power available and compatibility across all my gear. 
That protocol supports a ton of different devices. So basically any Apple device, Samsung phones, Google phones, you can even use this for your DJI Mavic 3 drone or your Nintendo Switch. On a 16 inch MacBook Pro, you can expect to go from zero to 56% battery life in about half an hour, which is outstanding. And in regards to all that stuff I was mentioning earlier about handshaking with your device, this charger has a power dispenser system specifically designed to be safe for all your devices. And it's also got a thermal guard system that takes 200 temperature readings every second, just to make sure that everything is looking good and there's no overheating. I can even charge two laptops and a phone at the same time, all at full wattage with this thing, which is pretty incredible. The last thing that I'll mention about charging is the cable that you charge with is just as big of a deal as the charger itself. So make sure that you're using either the cable specifically made for your device, or you buy one that is high quality and supports whatever power output you need for your particular device. Uh, please, no dollar store cables, people. That's asking for a bad time. Ugreen includes a really nice braided cable with an exo charger, and you can see it's got 240 watt support stamped on the side there. But if you need others, Ugreen is honestly my go-to for third-party cables. I'm actually using some right now to record audio for this video, and I generally have a lot of trust in their products. I'll link this charger and some of my preferred cables in the description below if you're interested in picking any of this stuff up, along with some other you green charging options if you're looking for different options or a different price point. One thing is for certain though, as our devices get more complex and more expensive, the power delivery is one of those things I think is super important that often gets overlooked. So regardless of what charger or option you choose, you really wanna make sure that it's high quality and that you're protecting yourself from any kind of failure. So if you take away anything from this video, I just hope it's some increased awareness surrounding this topic. I really don't think that you can go wrong with this Nexo 140 watt charger, whether you're looking to charge your phone, your tablet, or your laptop. If you have any questions about this particular model, just let me know in the comments down below, along with any tips that you might have for charging your devices. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you wanna see more tech related content, or if you wanna have a somersault contest with me, throw our backs out and spend the following two weeks recovering in a bed, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.